northern lights. Uh, I was able to see them when I was about 12, 13 years old. I used to live in Canada and one Friday night in the winter. Uh, we were coming home late and uh, as I was getting out of the car, groggy and sleepy, uh, I saw the northern lights above us, like a very low shimmering sheet of wonderful lights. They're actually rainbow lights, they're not all green like this. And they shiver above your head and noiseless, no noise whatsoever, very eerie and beautiful. So at the end of the summer, they say it's a good time, okay, you can see the foggy banks and these uh, northern lights. This is, this is the foggy bank. The, this is the um, fog bow that they, they were describing, okay, across the sky. That's the fog bow together with the northern lights. This is our sun, totally blank, no sunspots whatsoever. And this is one of the solar prominences recently taken. Okay, that's the size of Earth to scale. You can see how huge that is. All right. Now this was taken, of course, by our friend from his backyard observatory, Martin Wise. And these are the fireballs. The fireball network. Every night, NASA all sky cameras scan the skies above the United States for meteoric fireballs. The blue are fast flying, the red uh, and the yellow are, the red is of course the, there's no red here, are the slowest. So NASA all sky cameras scanning the skies above the United States for meteoric fireballs. Automated software maintained by NASA's Meteoroid Environment Office calculates their orbits, their velocity, penetration, depth in Earth's atmosphere, and other characteristics, and daily results are presented here on Space Weather. And today we had 19 fireballs. The inner solar system, all of the fireballs intersect at a single point, Earth. This is always the case. For the life of me, I don't understand why everything seems to be coming towards Earth. They're not going anywhere else, they're always coming towards Earth. Why is that? I'm not an astronomer, but please tell me if you know why. Here are the near-Earth asteroids, the potentially hazardous asteroids, space rocks larger than about 300 feet across, 100 meters, that can come close to Earth, closer than 0 0.05 AU. None of the known PHAs, PHAs is on a collision course with our planet, although astronomers are finding new ones all the time, as we found with Yanadi with his... Um, interstellar comet that they named after him, Comet Borisov. Okay, that's what we talked about before. There are a lot of amateur astronomers that have a wonderful hobby of, such as that that have found uh, asteroids and comets that, uh, like, like this comet, that uh, the space agencies have not found. Of course, they alert them to this and then they keep their eyes on them. So, 2,800, sorry, 2,018 potentially hazardous asteroids. The next one will be on the 26th. Velocity 4.7 kilometers per second. That's going to be 25 meters, about 75, 80 feet across. Okay. And, uh, it's going to be 4.2 lunar distances outside of us. Let's remember that the little asteroid that was supposed to be past the moon, beyond the moon, that was supposed to go straight into dark space, did not do that. It came careening into the Caribbean Sea, Caribbean Ocean, and uh, that's when the astronomers told us and explained to us that it had to do with the Yarkovsky effect, in other words, the sun heating the surface of the asteroid causing it to tumble on its axis and it tumbled that way it's as if something had hit it and it tumbled off its trajectory and careened into earth just like these things so um okay they also have the cosmic rays in the atmosphere that they find we notice that the higher you go the more radiation of course you get is incrementally higher and we here we notice that we have from 2014 to 2018 
radiation has increased is because of the fact that our magneto magnetosphere is becoming weaker for some terrible reason and is causing uh, solar radiation and cosmic rays to become more evident towards us. Okay? And it explains it here. Why are cosmic rays intensifying? The main reason is the sun. Solar storm clouds, such as coronal mass ejections, sweep aside cosmic rays when they pass the Earth during solar minimum, maximum, sorry, and CMEs are abundant and cosmic rays are held at bay. But now that we have solar minimum, the solar cycle is swinging towards solar minimum, allowing cosmic rays to return. Another reason could be the weakening of Earth's magnetic field, which helps protect us from deep space radiation. Yes, we do have weakening, as we saw here. Okay, so in these five years, it was weakened. This was last year, April, April at 18. So this has gone up another 4 or 5%. That's about 22, 23, 24% less uh, Earth's magnetism. That's terrible. That's terrible. All right, I'll leave a link below for you for this on space weather, which we check on every once in a while. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.